introduce yourself? My name is Demetrius Mavromichlis, and uh, I own the wood. I am very much an art lover. Uh, started probably with my, my love of old cars, my father being in the old Volkswagen business and used to restore those things. And then later on, got in the coffee business. We own the Venice Grind as well in Venice. We started with uh, the coffee shop and two empty storefronts next door. We turned those into art galleries and that's how I met Mira One. We've been meaning to team up on this wall since we got the wood and basically, uh, you know, the stars kind of lined up. You know, we had the last one on the wall for about almost two and a half years. And that was our way of like bringing art into the community because this area right here wasn't so cool before. And it's not necessarily cool. The art, I think, makes it cooler. But the thing is, uh, we had a lot of graffiti, just gang graffiti. And Culver City is really aggressive about removing graffiti whenever they see it. And they don't necessarily paint the, the walls the same color when they patch over it. But my thought was if we could bring the art in, we could actually maybe eliminate that. And that's, that's what it does. I heard the word, it's time to begin. The time is now, if not now, when? Fear and loathing is such a waste of time. From beginning to end, I can see a straight line. I heard the word, it's time to begin. sharing your name with us? Yeah, it's Mirror One. And um, how long have you been painting murals? Um, I started painting murals back in junior high school, back in 1986. Most of it was illegal back then. I noticed there's no sketches on the wall. Do you just do this freehand? Uh, yeah, pretty much. I mean, I kind of see it all in my head, so I don't want to we're done with myself. I already get it. I just need to kind of get into it and do it. I didn't go to art school. If I did, I'd probably have sketched it all out. But I kind of, my mom was an artist. She taught me the way she did it. She didn't go to art school. And so we kind of, I'm a little, I uh, do things a little differently than most people do. Uh, I love murals. I think it's a, a great part of LA. And, and this one definitely caught my eye. It's uh, really incredible and so on point with today's issues. Can you tell us about this mural and what inspired you to paint it? Yeah, uh, this mural is about common day folk, uh, family, just human humanity, dealing with the corporate reality that is um, mass producing and genetically modifying its products that it's making us into consumers that don't know what's in our food and what's in our air and what's in our water. What does the uh, I in the triangle mean? And uh, how does it relate to the GMOs? Um, well, it represents the, um, the elite secret society of bankers that manipulate the world's economics mm -hmm. and the world's uh, productions and trade issues and instigate wars around the world through economics. It's also on the back of the dollar bill. It's an image that represents the Illuminati. And the Illuminati is a, is a, um, is a complex uh, issue to talk about. This group consists of uh, the owners and financiers of oil companies and banks, the, the, the World Bank, the IMF, Mm -hmm. uh, other organizations that represent world authority, like the World Wildlife Fund, all the way to the Trilateral Commission, and the Council on Foreign Relations. These are all, they all make decisions on who gets to govern other countries. A uh, small select few elite, smaller than the 1% of the world's population. People like that are, are pretty much the, um, I guess the, uh, the the guy behind this. the curtain. Yeah, and, and, I, and I related this whole image kind of to the Wizard of Oz. Um, great movie. No one really ever talked about it too much, but the writer of it was very Aurelian in a sense. Small, twisted individual 
was behind an illusion of a great, powerful image. Right. You know. And that's kind of what's going on now. Yeah. A yeah. small group of people kind of pulling the strings. Yeah. Very twisted individuals yeah. that care not for humanity's um, safety, more for their own personal manipulation, power play that goes down, and you know, financial strength. And the GMO? Genetic Modified Organisms is a product of a company, a corporation called Monsanto, who owns all the patents to these uh, genetically modified seeds that are being marketed to third world countries right now for starv starvation. And it's trying to be, f they're trying to bring it into our food market right now. Yeah, I've noticed that. And um, the Europeans have done extensive research on the um, with rats and other mammals on what the end result is of, of consuming these products and the end result is abnormally large multiplied upon multiplied large tumors that develop more rapidly and radically than your normal tumor. Scientific dudes that really don't have great imaginations but have you know understanding of this stuff working with other non-imaginative people who have goals and egos and just lots of money get together and they think these concoctions up and it's kind of like a uh, mad scientist meets um, absent-minded banker and, and they get together and come up with these ideas. They also have engineered food to develop in, in, in um, I guess what they call it neutralized dirt dirt that's been uh, polluted or that's been uh, used um, for so long that there's no minerals left in it. It's, it's just um, nutritionless dirt. Yeah, they, they've developed seeds that'll grow in stuff like that where your normal organic seed won't grow in that because there's no nutrition for it to feed upon. Right. And also their fruit, once, once it yields fruit from the tree or vegetable from the ground, there's no seeds in it. And so the farmer can't take five to 10% of their yield and turn it back into renewable seeds. They have to repurchase the seed from Monsanto once again. To bring it back to like really frightening conjunctions that take place within this idea is that in, in a, an island off of Norway called Slavibord, Mm -hmm. It's near the North Pole. They've recently built something called the World Seed Bank. And the World Seed Bank is a acre upon, upon acre of excavated space deep within an island that's frozen already that has air conditioning units and, you know, uh, it's like a time capsule down there. But they've basically stored hundreds of millions of seeds from all over every plant in the world there for some strange reason. Organic seeds or, or organic genetic? Seeds. No, these are organic seeds. They're, 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 some, they're kept at a certain temperature so that, you know, there's no insects in here. It's perfectly sterile. But literally hundreds of millions of seeds of every plant type of the world, they've stored this. And, um, you know, this starts to sound like a little conspiracy-ish and a little frightening, a little paranoid, but these are real things. Yeah. And you can Google this, the World Seed Bank. It's under Google. It's been reported by on all major news networks. It's been covered by National Geographic and other company, and other uh, news media outlets. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it just goes on down the line, the nefarious things that go on in our world that no one takes notice of that have been changing since, say, the late 70s. So that's, that's really what this is about, is drawing attention more so to a bigger idea than just GMOs, which I made kind of the, the figurehead of this piece, but there's more going on than that. Mm -hmm. And then the other aspect is the awakening to life of the human being, right. uh, connected with Mother Nature, and connected with the Earth, and, and being more human. I like rebellion. I'm a rebellious soul and so my work has to have that type of appeal to it. It has to confront something in this world and um, so that's what I've been working on re recently and that's why this mural is what it is. Thank you so much for your time and yeah. I hope to see a lot of your murals around town. Yeah, for sure. Thank you. Well, Thank farmers you. Markets. I think every neighborhood should have a farmer's market and that's where this piece I think it speaks to. Like, look behind you know, from the artist's, you know, perception that he wanted to have something like the family rising up against, you know, all things that we read about now with the Prop 37 food labeling, where our food is coming from. You know, I shop for this place and I get as much as I can from the farmer's markets.
but you know you got to read the labels carefully even at not outside the farmers market but you still got to read where your food comes from chinese garlic like really like why would we ever buy garlic from china when gilroy california is the capital so this piece i think it, it kind of brings all those elements together you know family kind of rise up so like no more we just we just want to know where our stuff comes from and that's where farmers markets i think are great in a community and that's what the wood tries you know tries to aspire to be it's just bringing food in locally for locals by lo run by locals and sourced as local as possible you know um, that's that thank you thank you so much for your time i appreciate that you're welcome It's time to begin The time is now If not now, when? Fear and loathing is such a waste of time From beginning to end I can see a straight line I heard the word It's time to begin The time is now If not now, when? I wake in the morning Look in the mirror I know that what I see Is a being that God holds dearer It's time to begin There is only now If not now, when? There's lots of things I can do That change the political climate It's time to begin There is only now If not now, when?